Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. So I thought considering the World Cup is happening for the first time in Asia, um, there's going to be many, many millions of people who are going to be seeing rugby, following rugby, hearing about rugby for the first time and would like some information about the sport, the, the rules, some of the basics. So I'm talking, this is a basics video for the guy, the guy or girl who really wants to follow the World Cup, sit with their family, sit with friends and enjoy a, a, a mesmerizing festival of skill and talent and strength. So um, I wanted to kind of just give a video explaining the, the basics. You don't have to go read a book or figure it out because unfortunately rugby's biggest problem is it's a complicated sport. It's very complicated. Few sports have as many rules, as many different positions, as many different body sizes to make up a sport. So yeah, here's my beginner's guide to rugby. If you guys like it, I will bring up more videos um, on this topic. So please let me know and yeah, comment and share down below. So let's begin, jump right into it. So obviously rugby is made up of 15 man aside teams uh, played in a team bro in a field broken up with your rug the rugby posts on either side in the eight in the shape of an H. You've got the five meter, 22, 10 meter foot halfway line, other 10 meter, 22, five meter and try line breaking up. The areas behind the try line are your goal areas or try or in goal areas or try areas depending on the, the where you speak it from but that is effectively where the ball needs to be placed to score a try so this 15 man team is broken up to eight forwards and seven uh, backs or back line so forwards effectively normally are your larger players or the rules are murky on this and your back line is normally your more loose uh, sprinting players but i will break down those positions individually uh, next so the forwards is made up of your front row. Your front row, when we talk about forwards, you normally talk in the rain, in, in the actual um, scrum of it. So the scrum being the, the, where all the players and the, the eight players of each side lock in together and the three heads lock in like this. So when I say that, uh, obviously what I'm talking about is that they, the, your, for, your front row is your two props or uh, slaughter, Afrikaans, so some little local flavor and your um, hooker in the middle or number two. Rugby is one of the weird sport, one of the odd sports and one of the few sports and obviously helps as a, as a uh, casual viewer like yourself that um, the numbers on the back of their shirts denote their position, unlike many other sports. So this helps you if that, num that number will relate to that player's position is, uh, can help you definitely follow the sport a lot easier. So when I say that, number one and three are your props, with number two being the hooker in the middle of the scrum. The hooker's job mainly on the field is to throw in the ball in a line-out, although there are no fixed rules on this, it's just the general standard. And also, his, what is a fixed rule is they are the people who normally hook the ball back in a scrum. The props on either side are there for, um, obviously, anchors and push, uh, push in the scrum, they are normally your largest players on the field, although to be fair, many teams have broken this rule too. It's normally your people who are the, the stockiest build to handle that impact. Then we go back to our locks, number four and five. Locks are usually taller players due to their positioning and uh, use in lineouts, and also it gives the scrums more stability as an anchor point as they sit right behind the, the front row, uh, locking their heads in between the two, uh, the, the, the three players in front. Then we've got on either side of them flanks, number six and seven. Flanks are normally your uh, cover defense, uh, ball stealers. They do a little bit of pushing in the scrum, but they are normally there to also defend from a scrum. They, are, they will peel off and defend on a scrum, which is obviously that move after a knock on. I'll explain the rules and how that happens. But yes, that is, they are the players on either side of the scrum. Behind the scrum, we've got an eighth man, or um, and obviously a similar position, but more also attacking role when it comes to picking up the ball from a scrum in the attacking position. Although they obviously also all three will cover in defense and are normally used to steal ball. We'll explain now. Then we get to our back line. So now the seven players in the back line, the scrum half, Pretty self-explanatory or half back in some countries is your scrum is, 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 is normally the player who passes the ball out of a scrum and or ruck. Any position where the ball has stopped um, or is in a group of players and needs to be passed to the back line. So he is effectively your feeder to the to the back line. He is the entry point and normally a very <coughs> smaller smaller person, but can be um, but it's all about 
tactical precision, honestly, and understanding the how to place his players and his team and open and that. So it's a very essential position on the field, although every position has its role, obviously. Uh, so fly half being the uh, first line in your def in your <coughs> running f uh, f back line, very very essential player. Usually the player who kicks off, usually the player who kicks to poles. Uh, also, although as I get not a fixed rule. Uh, then it gets to your centers. You, these are usually your players who will either be very astute in defense and or um, able to cut lines and attack. You'll see normally larger, uh, f uh, larger foster players playing this position with your, that obviously, as I don't know if we missed numbers now, nine being your scrum off, 10 being your fly off, 12 and 13 being your centers. So 14 and 11 are your wings. Your wings being the players on the either side of the field, normally trying to find the gap on the outside. They are normally your sprintiest and fastest players on the field, but also can be massive if they want to, if, they, if the team is opts for rather than knocking over the opposing wing. This is obviously a tactical decision. Now that comes to your number 15. 15 being your fullback or uh, uh, where obviously the whole idea here being to cover defense, cover attack, and obviously kicking to able to take balls. This is normally a player who is uh, very quick on their feet, great in the air, and tactically minded as well, as this is a position of, no of normally large amount of space. So seeing space and understanding space is essential for play in this position. So then uh, now that I've spoken about the players, let's talk about some of the set pieces that happen in rugby. Set pieces, obviously, the most famous one I spoke already about the scrum, you've got a maul, you've got a ruck, you've got a line out. So a scrum is eight players from either side, the forwards locking in heads and scrumming for the ball that is fed by either, either team's scrum half based on the offense obviously caused to do it. Scrums are usually kicked off by knock-ons, but you can also choose a scrum from a free kick. Um, and there are also, or a penalty, if honestly, it depends on the tactical position and reasoning you'd like to use a scrum. Scrums have the tactical reasoning and why teams do it so close to the trial is that they pull all your forwards together, leaving an open field for only backs versus backs, which can sometimes be beneficial, especially if you're close to a trial line. Next, we go to a mall. A mall is normally formed after a line out uh, where a player jumps up, <coughs> gets the ball, goes down, and the players will then, while all are on their feet, will drive against one another. So this is an open play scrum almost, but obviously, as I said, this is not as like calculated where specific players lock in specific players. This is where people are standing and they're pushing, normally happening after a line out. Um, it can happen in open play, but usually results in a scrum to either team, depending on the attacking team uh, or the, uh, the attacking team and the defending team who held up the player. So if you hold up a player on either side, that turns into a mall as everybody's still standing. The next now obviously gets to a ruck, similar to a mall, but everybody's lined up. It's after normally after a tackle. Um, Players are down, you are, you are required, the attacking team, important rules as well, a lot of people get very confused. If you are the attacking team and attack, a player tackles you, the player who tackles you is required to release so that they, you are allowed to then place the ball. Once you've placed the ball, the attacking team, once they've gotten to their feet, can try and steal the ball. Obviously, the goal of the other team, the, the, the team who had the ball, their forwards, is to cover and protect the ball as quick as possible. This is a very popular, obviously, as I said, it's ball stealing from the flanks earlier. This is where they like to work and do their magic. Um, unfortunately, a lot of penalties, a lot of confusion in this area of the game. So I definitely think a whole other video can we get all the nuances of this of this area. But that is kind of the gist of it. Then we get to lineouts. Lineouts are Lineouts are essentially a throw-in in soccer. Uh, they are, but with a little bit added that instead of having that a player just throws the ball into anybody, each team can have a, 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 the attacking team or the ta player team who's got the lineout can choose the number of players in that lineout. Um, this can be any number, honestly, as long as it's between the five meter and the fifteen uh, meter between uh, from the from the outside line uh, or the sideline. The player then will throw the ball in. He can choose to throw it to anybody. Normally, props or uh, flanks and that will then lift locks. That's why locks are normally taller to lift and then catch the ball, obviously, above the opposing player. Uh, so that kind of explains that situation. So, yeah, that's a line out. Um, there are many, many other nuances to rugby, but that kind of gives you the gist of it. So just the last bit of it. 
would be the types of points we scored. You have a try, a, a penalty, a conversion, or a drop goal. So a try obviously being a player placing the ball over the try line of the opposing team. Um, that gives you five points. Always after a try, the team has the chance to convert, which is effectively from in line with where the ball was placed, any distance off behind that uh, player, the fly will then can choose to shoot at, to kick at the goal. After that, the um, you have a drop goal anywhere, as long as you, the ball hits the ground first and goes over the opposing team's poles, three points, a penalty. If a penalty is awarded, the player can then kick from that position, try and kick over poles. That gives you three points, both a drop goal and a penalty. Give you three points, drop goal, two, try, as I said, five. So yeah, thanks guys. I hope you enjoy this kind of demo explanation. Let me know if there's anything further you'd like to know, any kind of further tips and understandings of rugby. I can break down more detail as it is a very complicated game. But yeah, enjoy the World Cup, share my videos, like, subscribe, and let's follow along. Thank you.